we will have the uh, one more the last presentation on these non classical MOSFETs. We will continue on this compound semiconductor uh, content of materials and uh, heterostructure FETs. So, under the heterostructure FETs, we will talk of the high electron mobility transistors and some heterostructures exploiting the normal materials like using strain and quantization. So, we saw that the short channel effects in the MOSFET uh, also come into picture. So, in order to and these th short channel effects manifest in terms of the threshold voltage shift in the negative direction, also sub threshold slope becomes larger. Both effects are due to the 2D effect field effect on the channel region. These effects can be reduced by increasing the channel doping density accompanied by the reducing the channel thickness. Now, in fact, increasing the channel doping in the channel adversely affects the mobility. As all of us know, it also affects the velocity overshoot effect in the MOSFET mass set. This is because the initial velocity will be smaller, so the overshoot effect will be smaller. So, the actual benefits that you usually see will get uh, reduced if the doping is high. So, in order to work these can be overcome see the whole problem is when you increase the doping the ionized impurity scattering is the one which comes into picture. So, one has to reduce this effect. So, this can be reduced and the high mobility and the high electron concentration can be achieved if, if we can separate the channel where the electron movement is there separate the channel from the region where the doping concentration is made high. So, this is achieved using the high uh, using the hetero junction and hetero junction field effect transistors. Okay. So, we take a look at hetero junctions now because that is the one which we discussed today. Hetero junctions are formed by two dissimilar semiconductors for example, germanium on silicon that that is a hetero junction gallium arsenide on germanium that is a hetero junction. Now, there are two types normally people can talk of you can have uh, uh, conductivity of, of the same type in the two materials. For example, p type germanium p type silicon p type gallium arsenide p type germanium that is called isotype. Alternately other name is an isotype which is the common type of heterojunction that you encounter that is one region is p type other type region is n type. For example, you talk of uh, uh, p type uh, gallium arsenide n type aluminum gallium arsenide or aluminum arsenide. Okay. So, heterojunction requirements what are requirements most important requirement is uh, the lattice match requirements. When you grow one material on the other, there should be very good lattice match between the two. In the sense, lattice constant of the two materials must be comparable. If you are going trying to grow gallium or trying to grow uh, silicon on germanium, there is problem because the lattice constants are uh, quite different. Silicon is uh, 5.43, germanium is 5.65. But on the other hand, if I want to grow gallium arsenide on germanium, there is no difficulty because both have a lattice match. Now, what we are looking for is heterojunction consisting of aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide. Aluminum arsenide has got excellent lattice match with gallium arsenide. So, aluminum gallium arsenide also has excellent lattice match with gallium arsenide. So, you can grow L gas aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide very easily and you can vary this top layer okay band gap you can vary by varying x equal to 0 to 1 x equal to 0 as i pointed out earlier would mean aluminum component is 0 and gallium this is not g is gallium gallium is 1 so you will have 
aluminum G A A S. X equal to one, 0 would give you gallium arsenide and x equal to 1 will give you aluminum arsenide. So, you can vary x and vary the band gap of the layer which you are depositing on gallium arsenide. So, take a look at this. If you take a look at the gallium arsenide, the lattice constant is 5.6533. Aluminum arsenide also has got very close lattice match, very marginal misfit, misfit factor. Okay? So, you can grow aluminum arsenide directly on gallium arsenide or you can have an alloy of aluminum, gallium and arsenide al gas here x equal to 0 it is gallium arsenide the band structure is like this x equal to 1 it is aluminum arsenide band structure is like this. So, notice this is a direct band of semiconductor gallium arsenide that does not matter for us because we are looking out micro for micro electronics it is a direct band gap even up for auto electronics it can be used. It is band gap minimum band gap which is a direct band gap is 1.43 electron volts, but there is also a valley as we pointed out earlier at this place from the central moment of 0 position with the at a different momentum you have got a band gap is equal to 1.86. So, normally the electrons will reside here and the transition will be between these two and if the electrons get high energy they can go move into this region at high fields here the effective mass is higher. So, now what we are saying is we are trying to use this gallium arsenide. Now, if I have an alloy of aluminum gallium arsenide if I vary from x equal to 0 to 1 you have 1.43 the direct band gap tracking with this direct band gap of aluminum arsenide. So, the direct band gap will vary from 1.43 to 3.02 and the indirect band gap 1.8 will vary from 1.8 to 2.17 linearly it will vary. Now, just I want to mention also aluminum arsenide is an indirect band gap semiconductor. So, if you change completely from gallium arsenide to aluminum arsenide you will get indirect. So, if you move from gallium arsenide to the aluminum arsenide you will have a certain composition of x you will have direct band gap beyond that you will have indirect band gap. Okay? But the point that we are trying to make up uh, do is show is that you can vary the move from the direct band gap to smaller to wider band gap and ultimately to indirect band gap. So, okay, this is the indirect band gap with band gap 2.17. Let us see how it varies from a graph form. Notice 1.43 will vary linearly with 3.02 direct, 1.8 will vary linearly with 2.17 as x is varied from 0 to 1. x is 0 will give you gallium arsenide, band gap direct is 1.43, indirect is 1.8 as seen here 1.43, 1.8. And if you go to this other end, x equal to 1 that is aluminum arsenide, direct is 3.02. Okay, indirect is 2.17 here. So, when you vary the direct component will vary linearly from 1.43 to 3.02, the indirect component will vary from 1.8 to 2.12. Now, what happens is this see for example, here if you see there is direct component indirect component, direct comp band component is smaller than the indirect. So, actual band gap is this here indirect component is smaller compared to direct component. So, the band gap is actually 2.17. So, lower is the one which gives the band gap. So, as I vary x from 0 to about 0 0.3 or so, you will it will be a direct band gap semiconductor because direct component is smaller than one indirect component. As you move beyond this composition x greater than about 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 like that, 0 0.3 beyond that the direct component is larger than the indirect component. So, it becomes an indirect band gap semiconductor. So, what we are trying to tell is you can grow gallium arsenide or aluminum gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide and the composition of the L gas depending upon x you can have direct or indirect, but the band gap always you can get higher than that of gallium arsenide. So, you get a good heterojunction here. If you want to look at other materials like indium phosphide or gallium indium arsenide you can mix gallium arsenide with indium arsenide and make a compound gallium indium arsenide. 
for example, here x equal to 0 will give you indium arsenide x equal to 0 band gap is direct band gap 0.36 and gallium arsenide also is in there is a direct band gap that is x equal to 1 okay. this component is 0 gallium arsenide is 1.43. So, both ends extreme ends you have got direct band gap. So, I can have gallium indium arsenide throughout a direct band gap material. Why do we talk of that? Mobility of indium arsenide is very high. So, gallium indium arsenide mobility will be higher than that of gallium arsenide. We can have a band gap somewhere in between. Okay. For example, if I have something like 0.4 or 0.5, you will have band gap which varies very, very close to 1. Okay. So, why we talk of gallium indium arsenide? We can make heterojunction with the gallium indium arsenide on indium phosphide because x equal to 0.47, gallium 0.47, indium 0.53, the lattice constant is 5.88 angstroms, which matches with the indium phosphide. We can grow gallium indium arsenide or indium phosphide on indium phosphide, make high mobility transistors using that. Okay. We will today focus on the algas uh, type aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide. So, what is the heterojunction? If I take a look at the, uh, the homo junction, for example, if I take a talk of silicon, silicon, n type material, p type material. When you talk of the same material, band gap of material 1 is the same as the band gap of material 2. The electron affinity that is the energy gap between the vacuum level and the conduction band E c chi is the same in both cases. Silicon is 4.05. Okay. Now, if I take Fermi n type, Fermi level is very close to conduction band and the Fermi level here is close to the balance band. When you put them together, you can see that if you put them together, the Fermi level here is higher than Fermi level here. Therefore, the in the system from the theory of Shockley model, we know that due when you form a junction, electrons from this region where electron concentration is high will flow to this p region, okay, which would actually deplete the region on the surface and you will have a band bending upwards here. Okay. And from here, the holes from this side will move from left, left to right depleting this. When this depletes, the band will move down here. In fact, you can just uh, quickly see, I will see where I can show that to you. See for example, if you see the when you form the uh, energy band diagram, the, you, you know that Fermi level is flat and in the entire material Fermi level is here. Well, uh, no, conduction band, valence band, and because of the band depletion layer, it will go like that. So, this is the conduction band, this is the valence band. Correspondingly, the zero level, whatever chi was there, it will be there, that is the vacuum level. So, that is chi, and this is also chi. Okay. So, you get same chi. So, there is no discontinuity, discontinuity in the energy band diagram. So, notice somewhere here that is joint it bends up that bends down. So, the electric field that because this is depleted the electric field is like that anti charges here plus charges here. This is a standard theory of homo junction. Homo junction means Band gaps are same, chi is the same. There is there is a continuity everywhere. Vacuum level represents the change in the potential. And with respect to vacuum level, the conduction band will be located. So, we will go back to our theory of the uh, heterojunction. So, same thing holds good in the case of heterojunction. Here, we are talking of a band gap which is wider compared to uh, wider band gap, EG1 compared to another band gap, narrower band gap E g 2. So, the Fermi level is 
higher here compared to this. So, when you join them and here one more thing is chi 1 that is the energy difference between the vacuum level and the uh, conduction band chi 1 is smaller than chi 2. This is the basic Anderson's theory of model. This model holds good up to certain level to understand, but actually there is more much more than that what we say happens. So, let us try to understand it what happens in the energy band diagram. When you join them together, okay, the energy band diagram bends up here exactly the same way as we saw here. The energy band diagram bends here, okay. It bends up here on this side and it continues to bend up because if this bends up that bends down. Now, let us go back here. So, when you put them together because electrons get transferred here this will be depleted. So, the holes are transferred. So, this will be depleted. So, what you will get will be a deplete vacuum level there will be plus potential here minus potential here. So, the vacuum level will bend exactly the same way as we happen in the uh, Homo junction because the energy band at the vacuum level does not have any discontinuity it represents the way the potential varies. So, that is continuity. If you take a look at the condition band in the entire material wider band gap material it has depleted and bent up. All through here chi 1 is the vacuum level chi 1 is the electron affinity here same thing is here, but when you come from that side vacuum level bends down here because of potential variation like that plus here minus there. So, the conduction band also bends up down like this till we come to the junction. Now, you can see at the junction all through here this is chi 2 from the top to bottom is chi 2 and when you come here the gap between the vacuum level and the conduction band in the p type material is chi 2. Whereas, at the same point the joining point of the n type material <coughs> which is wider band gap there the chi 2 is uh, the electron affinity is chi 1 chi 1 is less than chi 2. So, these two conduction bands do not meet at the same point there is a sudden discontinuity here discontinuity here that is the specialty of the heterostructure. The energy band diagrams are not continuous there is a notch here. So, if there is a notch here it is almost like the notch that you see in the MOSFET. So, if there are electrons some so on this side if electrons are injected onto this side they will get collected here and those electrons cannot cross up this barrier they will get they will remain there. It is like what you have in the case of the I am sorry oh. this is similar to what you have in the case of the MOSFET. See for example, Okay. In the case of MOSFET, you should recall what you have is the oxide. The oxide is there, okay. that is like that. Then, if you have p type semiconductor, you have got the Fermi level like this, then you have got this like this conduction band E c and E v, and you have curved this like this oxide this is oxide and this is a p silicon and you have the metal. Now, you can see there is high band gap here about 3.3 .3 electron volts is there. So, when it is inverted here the electrons get locked down knocked here electrons remain here they cannot go up. That is why you will have got when you invert it here when it has become n type you have got electrons locked in that notch. So, whenever there is a notch like this there is a barrier head like this there will be electrons collected there. You can make use of that as the channel. If I connect the two ends of this channel by source and drain you can make a MOSFET. So, exactly same notice the similar type of notch is there in the case of hetero junction that is this. You have got this bending here there is a notch here. So, the band bending is actually such that so much that there are electrons collected here. So, now what you can do will be uh, before we go into the uh, structure I just give what will be the value of this. So, this notch is actually equal to you can see that is chi 1 minus or chi 2 minus chi 1 that is the first order theory and that is delta E c is the discontinuity in the conduction band 
and if that band gap E g 1 is larger than E g 2, this is actually E g 1. So, E g 2 will be E g 1 plus delta E c plus delta E v. Therefore, delta E v that is discontinuity here also discontinuity will be delta E g minus delta E c. So, what we are trying to say is this is first order theory, but in practice here it looks as if delta E c is chi 2 minus chi 1. But even in materials which there is chi 2 minus chi 1 is uh, not that much, you see a difference and that is governed by how much is the band gap difference between the two. So, the delta E c ultimately is related to E g 1 minus E 2 that is delta E g. So, it is seen that experimentally that delta E c by delta E g is about 0.6 to 0.64 for L gas gas system, L gas is element gala mass type. Okay. So, delta E g for x equal to 0.4 okay, from this particular thing for x equal to 0.4 delta E g is something like 1.43 plus 0.5. Okay. So, delta E g is 0.5. So, if delta E g is 0.5, delta E c is 0.5 plus 0.64 is 0.32. Okay. So, you will have delta E c of 0 0.32 electron volts if the band gap of this region is 0 0.5 uh, E g 2 plus 0 0.5 electron volts. In L gas, you can get that. Okay. The value different now if delta E c is 0 0.32 electron volts okay, and if delta E g is 0 0.5 delta E v see if this is 0 0.5 delta E g is 0 0.5 delta E c 0 0.32 this will be 0.18 that is what you put here. Okay. So, what you have is now L gas gas system which can be used as a gate, we can have the channel here, this region can be used as a channel, this is undoped which actually turns out to be very lightly doped 10 to the power of 13 and there is a depletion layer here, we saw the P region is depleted and there will be small depletion layer in the N plus aluminum gallium arsenide also, this is the electric field distribution here. So, what you will have will be if I do not have any gate connected put here, this region is not depleted. So, conduction band goes like this, gets depleted, then because of this work function high difference etcetera and delta G difference, it snaps down here by delta E c 0 0.3 or 0 0.32, then it rises up because there is a depletion layer here. Electric field is in that direction, therefore, the conduction band will rise up here. Okay, the point that you, you have to note down here is that in the case of conventional junction, there is no delta E c. So, this would have gone up like that straight away like this, but in this case because of this delta E c, this starts from the lower end, then it has to rise up to the same amount. So, that the electron distribution here and here match together. So, in other words, you will have a total potential drop across this which is sum of the which is more than the conventional built-in voltage of the MOSFET or the PN junction and the delta E c, delta E c by Q. Okay. So, what we are telling is I can actually have a transistor made by this. This is a gate region, this is a channel region, N plus region. Over that, see an undoped gallium arsenide, channel region, N plus element gallium arsenide over that rectifying contact. Okay. So, if I do not have a rectifying contact, what will happen we will see. So, we have also a source and drain region that is heavily doped N plus region which is usually realized by gold germanium alloying onto this region, it goes through that. So, because of the L gas gas structure, you have that notch here and electrons are present here throughout this region if the electrons are present here throughout the region, if I n plus region here and n plus region here, when I apply voltage between the drain, this we can call it a drain and the source when I apply voltage, the electrons there is electric field from here to here. <coughs> Therefore, electrons will be injected from here to the channel, they will be collected here, there will be current flow. But now, if I do not have the gate, you saw, when you did not have the gate, there is a channel here, but this there is a region which is not depleted. So, if I have a source drain connected like this, 
realized like this. Not only there will be current flow through this particular layer, there will also be current flow through this heavily doped M plus layer. In fact, in fact, the entire current will be masked or controlled by the current flow through this heavily doped region. If it is current flow through the heavily doped region, the mobility will be very low, there is no use. So, what you do is put a metal gate here. So, the metal gate here, you can the work function will be such that you can either deplete it completely or if it is not depleting completely, you can apply a negative voltage and deplete it. So, in from the mass spread theory, we know that the voltage required to deplete the entire N plus layer is called the pinch off voltage B P 0. Now, the voltage if the pinch off voltage if the depletion built in voltage is different from the pinch off voltage if it is lower than that, you have to apply a gate voltage which is, which is equal to V B i minus V P 0. We saw it in the mass spread theory. Threshold voltage of the mass spread is V B i minus V P 0. That means, it is a gate voltage that must apply to pinch off the channel. Okay? So, you can apply V B i minus V P 0 that is actually the point at which the channel will be conducting you will have current flow. Okay? Now, let us go further on that. So, the per function of the gate is to dip not only deplete the n plus layer, it also does the job of controlling the charge in this particular region. You can see once it is fully depleted, it is like the MOSFET metal insulating layer and the channel where inversion layer is there. So, by applying voltage to the gate, I can control the channel charge here. So, you can have right equations exactly similar to the MOSFET, where we have nu C oxide W by 2L into V G S minus V threshold, but if V threshold will be different from that of MOSFET and MESFET. We will see what it is. it is. So, in one way it looks like a MESFET because there is a short key barrier. Other way it looks like a MOSFET because this metal depleted layer and the channel. Okay. The N plus source drain contacts are formed by allowing this. The electrons are transferred through the gallium arsenide region where the doping concentration is very low. Since the doping concentration is very low, the ionized impurity scattering is absent. Therefore, you get very high mobilities. You get mobilities as high as the ideal 8500 centimeter square per volt second. At room temperature, you reduce the temperature to 77 degree Kelvin, you get 250,000 centimeter square per volt second. These are reported values in literature. Okay? You go down, even down, you will get much higher mobility. What is that due to? you can see the mobility effective mobility depends upon the lattice scattering mobility as the temperature goes up the lattice scattering mobility goes down mobility governed by the lattice because lattice vibrations increase if lattice vibrations in increase the scattering of the electrons by the lattice atoms increases therefore mobility goes down ionized impurity scattering when you go to lower temperature the ionized impurity scattering increases. Therefore, the energy is the scattering decided by the impurities uh, increases. Therefore, mobility governed by the ionized impurity scattering goes down. Okay? That is because when you go down to lower temperature, the velocities of the electrons are very lower. So, therefore, if there is an ion present, the electron actually will move very close to as it goes to the close to the atom, okay, the impurity, if it goes close to the impurity, it gets deflected by the electrostatic force. If the velocity is lower, it gets deflected more towards this, if electron gets, it gets more towards this ion, when it moves like that. Okay. If the velocity is high, it uh, chance of deflection is less, because it zips through that layer very fast. So, when you go to lower temperatures, velocities are lower. So, scattering probabilities are higher therefore, mobility falls. Now, the combined effect of that is 1 by mu lattice plus 1 by mu i. Okay. So, that is this combined effect. If the doping concentration is high, you can see maybe if you reduce the temperature, mobility is reduced drastically. But, if the doping is 0, very little, this component is 0. So, only this particular component is there, mu l is there. 
therefore, what you will have will be the what you will have in that case will be like this. Okay. What you will have will be the temperature versus mobility will be like that. So, room temperature we may have about 8500 centimeter square per volt second that is good low temperature T equal to 70 70 degrees Kelvin you will have 250,000 centimeter square per volt second. Okay. So, you will have to get very high mobility because other component you have eliminated by removing the dopants. Okay. So, that is about that. So, the extent of electron uh, concentration depends upon delta E c because higher the notch, higher the notch more chance of the having the electrons more chance of bending here there are more electrons will be present. Okay. So, the delta E c if it is higher you will get more electrons, that means more current flow for a given voltage. Now, delta E c depends upon mole fraction because delta E c depends upon delta E g, delta E g depends upon how much is the band gap of L gas higher than that of gallium arsenide, how much higher the electron con aluminum concentration higher will be the band gap there, higher will be the delta E g and higher will be the delta E c. Okay? In practice, you do not choose very high aluminum concentration because the aluminum itself is unstable, it, it gets oxidized, etcetera, and also it gives rise to trap centers and it affects the mobility. So, highest value of x that you choose is about 0.3 aluminum concentration. <coughs> which will give about 1.9 electron volts as the band gap. Okay. So, now one of the things that we want to see is when you deplete the whole this top channel completely because there was already this particular delta E c was present there will be charges. How do you turn off the device? What should be the voltage that you must apply to the device to turn it off? that is actually the threshold voltage. Okay. So, this was the diagram that we have drawn conduction band. Now, you have got you have to apply voltage equal to V b i minus V p 0 to deplete this region that is from the gate side. Now, in thermal equilibrium you have got both the electron distributions here, here is very little because it is undoped here it is high from the short theory of uh, junctions and short key barrier you know that the thermal equilibrium transfer of electrons from here to here will be 0. Now, there are electrons here because of this high band bending in the conventional homo junction there are no electrons there at that point there is no because there is no notch. Now, the band bending is more than that in the conventional junctions by an amount equal to delta E c and because of the delta E c more band bending is there. Okay. When you have that particular thing you have this thermal equilibrium achieved because band bending is more than that of in the conventional junction you will have virtually like an inversion layer here. Now, you must to remove the inversion layer here you must reduce the band bending by whatever extra amount of delta E c by q is there you must reduce. So, the amount that you must reduce that band bending is actually delta E c by q. Okay. So, the polarity of this voltage drop across this layer is plus here minus here. If I want to reduce that voltage by delta E c by q that is V f I must apply voltage plus on the right hand side and minus on the left hand side. P is made plus with respect to n. That means, you must have a forward bias to this junction so that the barrier height is reduced by delta E c which is delta E c by q. So, what we are telling is if I have this MOSFET okay, I apply V b i minus V p 0 the whole thing will be depleted, but 
across this layer there is built in field there is an electron here to remove the electrons I must apply plus here minus here. So, V b i minus V p 0 is actually negative total potential plus here because the charges are plus here donors donors are these are the donors plus here minus here. So, electric field is towards the gate here, but from the gas to the semiconductor this is n p field is like this there is 0 field here the depletion layers meet here, but there is also a let there are also electrons here if I just deplete it come up to this point there are electrons here on the inner interface. Now, to remove those electrons I must reduce this barrier I must apply plus here minus here or in other words once it is depleted completely if I increase the voltage by another another term or by a value equal to delta E c by q if I make this more negative whole thing is depleted. So, so there is this depletion layer actually will slightly fall because this gets forward biased. So, what you do is add a voltage equal to minus to this point this is already depleted, depleted so that minus delta E c by q that you apply here goes across this junction minus here plus here which is actually equivalent of forward bias in this which removes which reduces the barrier. So, electrons from here are actually removed in fact they are taken to the gate. <coughs> okay. So, when you do that when you apply more negative voltages whatever see there is connection between the source and this particular channel if you take a look at this here when I apply a negative voltage to this after this depletion if I increase further the negative charge is transferred from the channel to this to this gate. Okay. To transfer this voltage completely from here to here the voltage additional voltage that I must apply is delta E c by q. Once I apply more delta minus delta E c by q after depleting the whole thing I apply additional minus delta E c by q all the electrons will be transferred from here to here that is what is happening here. So, if I apply a voltage B of equal to V by minus V p 0 required to deplete this and delta E c by q required to remove the electrons from here back into this gate the channel will be turned off that will be actually the threshold voltage we call it we do not call it threshold voltage here by convention they call it as the gate voltage that we must be applied so that to turn off the <coughs> hemp. So, here the V of can be positive or negative depending upon what is this value delta E c by q let us say it is uh, uh, what we said is it will be something like uh, 0.3 delta E c 0.3 electron volts. So, this quantity will be 0.3 volts. Now, I can adjust the doping and adjust the p p 0 depending upon the doping uh, depending upon barrier head I have between the short key and the aluminum gallium arsenide you have got V b i. I can adjust the doping and the thickness so that V b i minus V p 0 is more than 0.3 volts. If V b i minus V p 0 is more than 0.3 volts if because this is 0.3 volts V of will be positive. So, I can have V of either a positive or negative supposing this term this is negative supposing this term is minus 0 0.1 volts this is 0 0.1 minus 0 0.3 volts you will have V of is minus 0.4 volts. So, you can have enhancement or depletion type of high electron mobility transistors uh, using this uh, hemp structures. Okay. So, the doping you remember you are not adjusting the doping here it is undoped all the doping that you are talking of is doping in this particular layer L gas layer. So, increase in the doping is not affecting the mobility of electrons here it is only adjusting the threshold voltage. So, you can have independent control of threshold voltage without affecting the doping here you can adjust the thickness here okay, and the thickness controls the capacitance as I pointed out the working of this is now once this is depleted the gate gets coupled out to this channel here. So, you can talk of write the equation similar to that of MOSFET and the I d V d gas characteristics transfer characteristics can be I d is equal to in the case of MOSFET mu n c oxide w by 2 l into V g s minus V threshold square. Here 
instead of V threshold we have V off given by this term negative or positive negative means depletion or type positive means enhancement type okay. and C s in the case of MOSFET it is a channel thickness in the case of MOSFET it is the oxide capacitance in the case of MOSFET it is the channel capacitance that is this quantity. So, in the case of MOSFET uh, MODFET or I am sorry high hemp hemp is also called MODFET that is modulation doped FET MODFET MODFET hemp all are same. So, in the case of MODFET or hemp C s is you can increase the C f s by reducing the thickness of that layer that is that layer. Okay. But then to adjust the uh, uh, threshold uh, to adjust the V off okay, you must actually increase the V p 0 if you want to increase keep that when you reduce that you must increase it to adjust the doping uh, to keep the V p 0 same when you reduce A you must increase N d. So, there is an upper limit to N d because as you go to higher and higher doping concentration, the metal semiconductor contact will not no longer be rectifying, it will become ohmic contact because of tunneling current between the small depletion layer formed between the N D and this quantity. So, upper limit on the doping, the doping on that controls the doping uh, uh, on this layer. So, there is a lower limit on A that you can choose. Okay, you may choose, choose uh, something like a few nanometers. 100 nanometers of that order you can choose 0 0.2 micrometer or even slightly lower okay because the upper level on doping concentration is uh, something like uh, 10 to 18 that you can do because of the limitation of the short key barrier door. so enhancement and depletion mode types can be made with by adjusting vp0 by adjusting that you can get this positive or negative, you can reduce A, then V p 0 goes down, V of can be made positive okay, by reducing that. Now, G m can be increased by as I pointed out, G m can be increased by reducing the channel thickness. This can be done by increasing the doping or the V of, adjust, v of adjustment. Okay. Upper limit on N d is instead over 18. So, that limits how much we can do here. <coughs> okay. So, what we are pointing out is you are able to increase the doping here in the aluminum gallium arsenide layer without increasing the doping in the region where the electrons are flowing. All that you are doing is tailoring the doping and thickness in the uh, other wider band gap material where the electrons are not flowing. You can tailor that to tailor the threshold voltage okay. and the substrate is undoped, mobility is high. So, you get very good characteristics. <coughs> now, here also <coughs> I am sorry just here also what you do is in addition to this algas doped layer when you do that you all usually in practice you put a thin layer of undoped aluminum gallium arsenide just about 1 or 2 nanometers. That is because if the whole thing is, is doped, the entire layer up to this channel is aluminum gallium arsenide heavily doped, then these electrons which are moving on the channel see the effect of the doped layer, some scattering is there to overcome that you put a thin layer of uh, L gas here. In fact, the optimization of that layer also is in, involved with the transconduction conductance adjustment. Okay. Now, quickly run through the thing. The characteristics this is just to show you that people have made this type of devices at 300 degrees Kelvin the transfer character the output characteristic I d versus V d s you can see it saturates like this red karu is the uh, 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 gate voltage okay. and as V d s is varied from 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 volts low voltage current 10, 20, 40, 60 milliamperes per division here. Okay. The most important thing you, we note is the current here, current here 
at this gate voltage at 300 degree Kelvin is something like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, oh, 10, 20, 30, 35 milliamperes. Whereas, here it is 40 to 50 milliamperes, 10, 20, 30, 40. So, 35, 40 and 45. So, about 10 milliampere higher, much higher current you get at lower temperature. This is because of the mobility. Notice also, the current rises steeply here. With the linear region, because the mobility is high, the conduct channel conductance is high. Therefore, the current rises steeply. The on the resistance of this high electron mobility transistor is very low compared to the on the resistance of the the same uh, at uh, room temperature. Okay? By lowering the temperature, mobility is increased and the on resistance is reduced. Very good for digital application. In digital applications, you want very low on resistance. Okay? This is the saturation current I d versus field transfer characteristics. In the linear region, you can see that the there is a crossing over and the current, current rises steeply at lower temperature because of improved mobility. Also, notice that there is a threshold voltage increase when you go to lower temperature. This is uh, attributed to the freezing of electrons <coughs> in the aluminum gallium arsenide layer. So, therefore, you must apply more voltage. I am not going down to details of that. This is the transconductance. This is the saturation I d versus V g s. Transconductance if you see, you can see the transconductance is very steeply rising in the gate voltage you get transconductance increases from about 225 milliampere per volt, 225 milliampere per volt here <coughs> to about 400 milliampere per volt at this point or about 0.5 volts, it is it's the transconductance is much much higher because the transconductance depends upon mobility. Transconductance on the resistance, everything improves because of the mobility. Go to lower temperature, you get higher mobility, higher transconductance by a big factor. In fact, such high transconductance also tells you it is not due to velocity saturation, it is due to the velocity overshoot effect, if at all, in addition to because of the high mobility. Okay? In summary, of first part of this, a few more things I will discuss. Heterostructures enable spatial separation of electrons from the dopant electrons atoms very high mobility can be attained announcement of carrier mobility can be further announcement can be achieved using materials such as indium gallium arsenide as channel materials okay what we are using is gallium arsenide room temperature mobility is about 8500 but if you go to indium gallium arsenide, you can get much higher uh, mobilities, at least two to three times more than mobilities than this at even at room temperature. Alternately, you can use strained layers. <coughs> okay, let us see what is that. If the region where the this is in addition to this hemp etcetera, even if you use conventional MOSFETs, you can go to use silicon itself and subject the strain uh, silicon to strain. If you have longitudinal tensile strain that is if you have tensile strain along the length of the channel it is stretched. Okay? The, then the electron mobility improves stretch it along the length of the channel electron mobility improves. So, n channel devices you can actually stretch it by depositing silicon nitride on the top of the finished device that gives you rise to tensile stress which stretches the channel along the channel channel length which actually increases the electron mobility. This peop, uh, the intel people have tried this out that works out fine. Now, at the same token if it is a p channel device, if I stretch it along the channel by tensile stress, the mobility goes down. Okay? 
I am not getting down to the physics of that due to time, I will just not discuss it at this moment. So, it goes down, but if you compress it, if I subject the channel to compressive stress, then the whole mobility goes up. So, the moral of the story is if I have n channel transistors, that region you compress subject it to longitudinal tensile stress along the channel by putting silicon nitride on the top of the channel of the gate, you can increase the electron mobility of the n channel device. Wherever you have p channel devices, you subject the channel to compressive stress. How do you compress it? Between the source and drain, for example, between the source and drain. Okay. See for example, if I have the channel here, if I have the p plus here and if I have p plus here, okay, this is n. I am talking of p channel device, oxide here and then the gate. Okay. Now, what I should do is I must compress it in this direction because this is the p channel. I must compress the p channel. How do I do that? You put introduce here silicon germanium, silicon germanium alloy here. When you do this implantation or diffusion, introduce also on both sides silicon germanium. This actually because these atoms are bigger compared to the silicon atom, the, the channel is in between the two layers which actually has bigger atoms. So, it pushes this channel in this direction that leads to compressive stress. So, the p channel devices p channel gets compression compressed gets compressed along the length of the channel the mobility of holes goes up. This is the trick that uh, the analog device I am sorry Intel here has done this. All that I have said here is good in, a, in p channel the silicon devices when the source and drain regions are found by using silicon germanium channel is in compressive stress increases mu p. In n channel MOSFET electron mobility is increased by top layer nitride which introduces tensile stress. Okay? Now, new materials last few slides. Strained germanium, strained silicon all these can be used to increase the mobility over and above that. If I have silicon, I can subject it to if I have tensile stress, you know electron mobility can be increased. If I subject it to compressive stress, you know that the electron whole mobility can be compressive, whole mobility can be increased. You can have germanium, you can enhance the mobility over and above what it has got electron mobility and whole mobility by subjecting to strain. How to do that? You can do that growing dissimilar metals. We said for heterogeneous structures you must have lattice match, but if I use lattice mismatch structures for example, I have silicon here which has lattice constant 5.43 between the atoms. I grow germanium on the top of that lattice constant is 5.65 silicon germanium will be in between either I go silicon germanium or silicon uh, germanium. If I grow thick layer the lattice will be that of this silicon germanium, but in between you can see the if it is thick layer it will relax to its own lattice constant and there will be broken bonds defective layer, but if I use the layer very thin there compared to this silicon layer, then the silicon layer forces its back. Okay. It the this is a this is there is no strain here, there is there are defects here thick that is why you cannot go thicker layers of uh, heterostructures, but if I grow very thin layer then the thinner layer gets compressed by the bottom it is it is pulls, pulls it back when you have one layer or the other the top layer is thin and the bottom layer is thick that actually pushes it like that compresses because it tries to this bottom layer tries to pull it along that direction. So, that bond length increases like that there is compressive stress on this. So, bigger lattice atoms that is germanium and silicon will get compressed. So, if it is compressed 
it is good for p channel. If I have silicon germanium on germanium, silicon germanium is uh, smaller lattice constant compared to germanium, either tensile stress, you can make n channel MOSFETs higher mobility. So, that is what is done there. So, this gives you actually there are uh, uh, you know this as you grow there is a critical thickness up to which you get this strain layer beyond that there is no strain layer it is defective. See for example, if I am growing germanium silicon germanium when germanium is x germanium is 0.2 I can grow it about 0.1 1000 angstrom that is 0.1 micron layer thickness which is strained with which has no defect that is like this I can grow. If I grow more than that thickness then it it will be it will be like this defective layer. So, so this tells you that if you want more germanium you know thickness that you grow will be very little. For example, if x, x small fractions of germanium you can grow hardly 2 nanometers of germanium which is strain layer with the which is defect free defect free. So, this layer is defect free, but it has higher mobility compared to the. So, now we will see how the strain induced layers can be introduced. So, the one of the approaches is silicon substrate uh, graded uh, silicon germanium, then relaxed silicon germanium which actually has that is constant more than that of silicon. If we grow silicon layer on the top of that, it will be strained and it will experience compressive stress because along the horizontal direction compressive stress because that is constant of this is smaller compared to that and this relaxed the layer. So, it will try to stretch it, uh, it will it will stretch it. So, it, since it is tensile stress, you can use that uh, for or uh, this will actually because that is constant of this is smaller compared to that and this relax the layer. So, it will try to stretch it, uh, it will it will stretch it. So, it, since it is the enhanced electron mobility. By controlling the x in this layer, you can control this lattice constant of this layer. Okay. So, bigger the lattice constant, more will be tensile stress. More the x here, bigger the lattice constant, more will be stress here. More will be the uh, strain, more will be the mobility. So, you can see x is point, uh, 0.13, you get much better than the classical uh, reported mobility of electrons. If you make x 0.28, you get even higher. Okay. So, this is one of the approaches which was uh, reported in literature uh, by some of the authors. So, electron mobility in strained silicon on the silicon germanium is higher because of because silicon experiences tensile strain. Now, there is one we can get dual channel. This has been reported in literature a few years back. Silicon graded silicon germanium x gives what is the mole fraction of germanium and then you grow on that relaxed relaxed layer means actually the lattice constant is governed by how much x is there. Okay. On the top of that, you go grow strained, you grow silicon germanium with mole fraction y larger than that of x. That means, y larger than that of x means actually germanium content is more in this layer compared to the germanium content is here. So, if germanium content that is about 12 nanometers, if the germanium content is more in this layer, okay, that means its lattice constant is more compared to the bottom layer if the lattice constant is more it will be experienced because of this layer it will compress it it will try to bring it equal to this particular layer so there will be compressive stress on the carriers here so if it is compressive stress you get the compressive stress y is larger than that of x how much is the compressive stress depends upon how much is y compared to x okay so, due to the compressive stress, the whole mobility in this layer can be increased tremendously. So, these are the results which are being reported experimentally. For example, if y is 0.6 okay, and x is 0.3, y is greater than x, it is double. You get a mobility for this is as a function of vertical electric field. For a given electric field, you get the whole mobility which is about about 300 centimeter square per word second. Nothing much to boast of, but I go to y 0.8, that is 80 and 50, much higher y, 
you get mobility which is getting down to 800. Whose mobility 800? Much more than that in silicon. You go to 100, that is germanium itself there, strained germanium, then you get mobility much more than 1000 centimeters square per volt second, that is the whole mobility. So, you can see the power of using these strain layers. <coughs> Similarly, if I put on this layer, silicon strain layer, okay, I can get, because this is uh, smaller than this, I can get tensile test, I can make n channel layer. I can get p channel devices, n channel devices, that is dual channel MOSFETs I can make here. Okay. So, the whole mobility tensile factor is about 10 x there and electron mobility is enhanced approximately by factor of 2, all that can be seen in that case. Okay. And this is actually the result that you get, uh, whole mobility enhancement you get if you use silicon germanium at the source end, but this is using strain layer, you get much larger whole mobility compared to what we see by using the silicon germanium at the source end rate. Now, the last one what I am trying to point out here is actually we can have the heterostructure on insulator that is high. So, you can have the, uh, you can grow relaxed silicon germanium on that okay, and you can grow strain layer here and uh, put it upside down and bond on the, on the silicon with the oxide, etch the top layer you can get strained silicon layer. So, what I am trying to point out is by using this combination of this uh, bulk layers, mounting it upside down on the bottom layer and etching down the remove unmounted layer like this, you can get strained silicon. For example, here you can have this layer pointed on to the buried layer, you can see here you, go, you, you have got silicon, silicon, strained silicon, silicon. Put upside down bottom you have got, this is coming at the bottom like this and want it and at the unwanted layer, you get the structures like the hoi. So, what a summary process induced stress has been used to achieve significant mobility enhancement in short channel devices. <coughs> okay. Silicon, silicon germanium material systems has the potential to achieve very large improvements in mobility. For example, 10x whole mobility enhancement for strained silicon germanium channel have been reported. Heterojunction devices such as hemp enable very high mobility transistors using doped wide band gap semiconductors. With that, I conclude my uh, discussion on non-classical MOSFETs where we have covered where the channel have 